climate change is already happening. The pollution the imperialist nations pour into the atmosphere is fueling runaway global warming. Just 100 companies are responsible for 71% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. CO2 emissions must be cut drastically to avoid a catastrophic 2 degrees temperature rise on pre-industrial times, which we are on course to hit by 2050. Despite this, global carbon emissions have increased by 2.7% last year. A 3.5 degree rise is considered to be the extinction point. This ever-increasing output is not matched by improvements in global living standards, where equality continues to soar. Capitalism means production for profit. Whole continents are enslaved for the cheap extraction of their minerals and natural resources. So what is the alternative? Socialist Cuba is a world reference for environmental sustainability, an inspiring example of an alternative society. In 2015, the Sustainable Development Index identified Cuba as the only country in the world to have achieved sustainable development, having a high level of human development coupled with a low carbon footprint. In Socialist Cuba, production is organised to meet the people's needs. With commitment to universal free healthcare, education and community development, Cuba has achieved human development indicators that compete with the richest countries in the world. But Cuba doesn't just look after its own population. It sends medics, educators and other development aid workers all around the world. Cuba's solidarity programs have benefited 186 countries. More than 500 million patients have been treated by Cuban doctors. The Cuban literacy programs have helped 9.5 million people worldwide to read and write. The revolutionary government has done this for 60 years despite facing a crippling blockade which cost the nation an average of $12 million each and every day. Cuba has long been experimenting with renewable energy and ecology. However, the drive to reduce fuel consumption and improve efficiency assumed critical importance after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, when Cuba lost 85% of its trade overnight and GDP contracted by 35%. Food, gas and oil all became scarce as the US attempted to suffocate Cuba by tightening the economic blockade. Cuba restructured agricultural energy and transport systems along ecological efficient lines. All rural schools, health clinics and social centers in the country, not previously connected to the national grid, were connected with solar energy. Solar panels and electricity now are now provided to 2,300 rural schools and 500 family doctor consultation houses. A huge reforestation program was launched in 1998. Now 30.6% of its land is covered with forest with Cuba identified as the most advanced reforestation in Latin America and the Caribbean. The Cubans turned to urban farming. In Havana alone, 35,000 hectares of land are covered by organoponic urban farms and around 70% of Havana's fruit and vegetables are grown around the city. 2006 was the year of the energy revolution. In six months, over 9 million incandescent light bulbs were changed for energy efficient alternatives, making Cuba the first country in the world to complete the switch. Cuban families received energy efficient refrigerators, rice cookers and fans and other appliances at highly subsidised prices. The old electrical plants were replaced with nearly 2,000 microelectrical fuel plants, promoting decentralised power production and improving efficiency. This saved Cuba over 961,000 tonnes of oil. The energy revolution increased the installed capacity of energy production by 22%, while only increasing fuel consumption by 4%, and decreasing greenhouse gas emissions by 69%, an outstanding achievement. The energy revolution continues today. In 2017, Cuba set out to replace 13 million fluorescent lamps with LEDs and substitute 2 million electric resistance cookers for induction cookers, alongside the installation of 250,000 LED street lighting lamps. In the National Development Plan through to 2030, the country aims for renewable energies to supply 24% of the electricity in the national grid, up from around 4% today. Much of Cuba's renewable energy comes from biomass a renewable source of energy from agricultural crop waste, sewage and animal manure. Most important is bagasse, pulp residue from the processing of sugar cane, which is used to generate electricity to power the sugar processing plant and feed into the electric grid. Biogas is also widely promoted, 
a renewable energy source produced by the fermentation of agricultural crop waste or animal manure. The Cuba Rum Distillery in Santa Cruz has become the first rum production plant to produce net positive energy. Using solar panels and biogas digesters, the plant treats the wastewater of the distillation process, producing fertiliser and water for agriculture. This avoids producing 600 tonnes of CO2 and even produces energy for the national grid, as only 40% of the energy generated is used for the rum production process. Cuba's new constitution was approved in February 2019 following a national consultation. It, it's committed to promoting the conservation of the environment and the fight against climate change, which threatens the survival of the human species. Cuba only emits 0.8% of the world's greenhouse gases, but like most small island nations, it will be disproportionately affected by climate change. Scientists predict that the availability of water could be reduced by 37% by 2100. The sea level could rise by 27 centimetres by 2050, whilst the average annual temperature has already risen by 0.9 degrees Celsius in the last century. 82% of Cuba's beaches already suffer from erosion. To confront these challenges, the Cuban government is working on a 100-year plan to protect its population against the effects of climate change. That plan is called Teresa Vida, Life Task. It includes moving low-lying populations further inland, preventing new housing construction in areas prone to sea flooding, breeding strains of crops resistant to higher temperatures, and promoting beach recovery and defensive reforestation, accompanied by a nationwide education program. It is the socialist planned economy in a worker state that enables Cuba to respond in this way. It's a lesson for the world. We have to learn from Cuba's approach to sustainability and renewable energy and the structures of people power and community organisation that are crucial to its achievements. The wealth of the world's billionaires increased $900 billion in the last year, $2.5 billion every single day. 26 people own the same amount of wealth as the 3.8 billion people who make up the poorest half of humanity. 10% of the world are suffering from malnutrition and every day 10,000 people die because they lack access to affordable healthcare. 262 million children will not have access to school next week. One in every 200 people are homeless in Britain. System change, not climate change. System change, not climate change. System change, not climate change. Rich imperialist countries like Britain are driving environmental destruction and global warming as they exploit poorer countries around the world. This is a new form of colonialism. It is the poor around the world and the poor countries who are paying the price and suffering the consequences of a climate crisis that they are not causing. Climate change is a war. Of the rich against the poor. Climate change is a war. Of the rich against the poor. Climate change is what we hate. Two, four, six, eight. Climate change is what we hate. Two, four, six, eight.